Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and this is the monthly Grass Tin Update with Grass Tin Advisor Neve Doyle to discuss grassland management tips for the month ahead. Neve, it is a very challenging August. What is grass growth like at the moment on farms? Huge variation exists on farm as there are areas in the southern half of the country who could do with more rainfall and there are areas in the northern half of the country where land is challenging to graze and particularly on heavy soils farms, animals having to be housed. When we look at the weather station data, there are parts of the northern half of the country that received 170 mil rainfall for August and parts of the south of the country who have only received 45 to 50 mil rainfall. So with these challenging weather conditions, grass growth is below normal and as a result, grass supply is behind target. Huge variation there, and even currently, what covers of grass are there on farms? So if we look at average farm cover across the country, there is huge variation again. Some farms are on target at average farm cover of 1,000 kilos of dry matter per hectare for this time of year. However, most farms are struggling to achieve this. If average farm cover is below 600 kilos of dry matter per hectare, aiming to achieve an average farm cover of 750 to 800 kilos of dry matter per hectare or more will be a reasonable target for mid-September. To achieve this, action must be taken now to reduce herd demand. The last day for chemical fertiliser application is 14 September, so it's important to establish your remaining fertiliser allowance for your farm, as current application of N during early September gives a high response. The best response from fertiliser for this time of year will be paddocks with perennial ryegrass, reseeded ground, paddocks with high soil fertility and ground that was cut for silage. Therefore, prioritise these paddocks. You mentioned there, Neve, it is difficult to build covers given the figures there you've mentioned. What should farmers do to overcome this? They might have suffered from a drought or heavy rainfall in August, as you mentioned. So if behind on grass supply, the priority is to build grass in the next two to three weeks before grass demand exceeds grass supply. So to increase grass growth on the farm, ensure fertiliser spread is up to date. Prioritise watery slurry to silage ground or bales cut for surplus to replenish P and K offtakes and lengthen the rotation to 30 days plus. Herd demand must be reduced on these farms. To reduce demand in the past few weeks, some farmers have fed silage out. Calves have been creep grazed in front of cows to break the bond and concentrate supplements. Concentrate supplement has been fed earlier. Calves are being weaned earlier in September versus late September. This supplement then that was introduced four weeks pre-weaning will be continued two weeks post-weaning and possibly longer on some farms. Most of the farms then in the Future Beef Programme have scanned and given the difficult spring, overall scanning rates were good. So various options are being discussed for empty cows to sell live or depending on farm where fodder is available, they may be finished on farm. Also then, finishing stock have been housed and speaking with farmers, they are lighter for this time of the year. They will be built up over the coming weeks and the plan is to have them finished before Christmas, which will be a challenge on some farms due to the poor weather impacting on performance and late turnout last spring. It's important then to prioritise young cattle for the last rotation as autumn grass is more beneficial to a growing animal. Eve, looking at the coming weeks, what grass growth and grazing conditions are expected? So grass growth predictions are quite variable across the country, with mid-50s expected to grow in the south and east. However, higher growth rates are expected in the north, with 60s expected, 60 kilos of dry matter per hectare expected. The northwest is expecting low rainfall of 5 to 10 millimetres for the next seven days with the east and south expecting higher rainfall of between 20 and 30 millimetres. So hopefully this will improve situations on farm across the country. And third cuts of silage have been harvested currently or in the coming days. What would you advise farmers now to do at this stage? So I suppose complete a fodder budget on pasture-based Ireland just to assess where winter stocks are after your third cut silage. On average, second cuts were back 20% on some farms. So farmers closed again for Turgo, which has resolved most issues. If you are behind on forage for the winter, consider purchasing forage locally and reducing winter feed requirements by maximising days at grass in the autumn. And for farmers that have harvested red clover recently, Neve, how will that be managed in the coming weeks? Last crop harvested in Grange earlier this week. 
They plan to graze the clover in three to four weeks' time before the winter. While implementing bloat prevention strategies using bloat oil, adding a fiber source, which will be silage this year due to high price of straw and 24 hour breaks. Depending on last cut, when the last cut was harvested, some farmers will wait to harvest a four cut. And the main thing then is to avoid a heavy cover being left over the winter. That's great. And even finally, what are the top three messages you have for farmers in the coming weeks? So the first message then is empty tanks when possible as the closing day for spreading organic fertilizer is 1st of October. Two then is assess your growth and demand on farm, your growth versus your demand on farm. Three then is review your fodder budget and then also ensure to visit us at the ploughing stand this year. That's great, Neve. Thanks very much. Thanks, Catherine. Don't forget to join us for our regular Beef Edge podcast on Wednesday. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.